Yeah, one of these videos has been a long time coming and I wanted it to get out the door, so it's just audio only. In the last video I did like this, I said I was going to talk about girl gamers and how there's fake ones and real ones. But who am I to judge who's a real gamer or not? Well, let me add an addendum to that. If you work at GameStop and know nothing about video games and therefore cannot help a customer in any way, shape, or form, you're not a gamer and you don't belong there. That's like working at an auto parts store and not knowing what a radiator fan is, or working at a cell phone store and not knowing anything about the phones you're selling. Yeah, you may be trained at the register, but when a customer asks for something and you work at a store that only sells one type of product and you know nothing about that product, you don't belong there because you can't help them to the degree which they need to be helped. But anyway, on the last video, someone asked about people who claim that retro games are better than modern ones and vice versa. The answer is actually easier than you may think, but I'll save that for the conclusion. For those that say that retro games are better, the biggest factor leading to this is nostalgia. But again, I'll save that for later. There's a lot of reasons to love retro games. The appeal of the simplistic graphics, giving a very unique charm to the presentation. And there's challenge. Most modern games are just way too easy. You pay $60 to get an 8 hour movie and you're done because the developers wanted you to see the story they put so much effort into writing, and I can understand that. They're also more simple in terms of control. Look at the controllers that we have now with the 8th generation that's out. There's 4 face buttons, 4 shoulder buttons, touch pads, touch screens, 2 analog sticks, a directional pad, motion sensors, share, menu, and option buttons. I remember just having a D-pad, A, B, start, and select. And my parents remember having a knob that you turn to move a paddle up and down. Some people like more simplistic games. Why do you think the indie market saw such a huge increase in the seventh generation? They were simpler games that brought back a lot of elements us older gamers missed and brought in things that younger gamers missed out on because they weren't born yet, showing them something they would have to play on an emulator. And a lot of our old games came back, re-released or remade as digital downloads. And that leads to the nostalgia factor. Some of us older gamers remember that these old games were some of the best we ever played. Like Final Fantasy VI, or Final Fantasy III if you're in America, Super Mario Bros., The Legend of Zelda, and Sonic the Hedgehog. These were amazing games that blew our minds and we hold fond memories of them. And we still go back to play them. I still play Sonic 3 & Knuckles to this day because it was my favorite game back in the fourth generation. We also remember that our gaming was done almost strictly on the weekends. Our parents would take us as kids to the video store to rent a game for the weekend. It was more of a reward system for finishing our homework and chores. I remember going to the local video store, going to the gaming section, which was strangely next to the porno section, and I wish that was a joke, grabbing a game, slapping down three bucks, and taking it home, playing it all night until it was time for bed, then waking up the next morning, watch cartoons, and then back to gaming all day long until our parents kicked us off the TV. We remember sitting on the floor until our butts fell asleep because we were wired to the system. Multiplayer was your friend sitting next to you, which was great because if they did something you didn't like, you could punch them in the nuts. Brings a warm, fuzzy feeling inside, doesn't it? However, nostalgia can blind people to the truth. Out of the thousands of games that were on those old systems, only a small handful of them were good. The rest were badly made and shoved out the door to make a quick buck. We had a gamble on our games, because if the game sucked, that was money lost. We didn't have easy access to game reviews. Your review was the box and that was it. The only other way to play it safe was word of mouth through friends or just renting it. So now we will look into modern games. What makes them so great? Well, look at the technology we have now. Internet, wireless communications, high definition screens, amazing computer processing power. We're living in the future. Maybe not Jetson's future, but we're getting there. Just look at what the PS1 could do, and now look at what the PS3 does. We've come a long way. The graphics are amazing. We have higher capacity storage media to sort data on like Blu-rays and huge hard drives that are inside the system. These things connect to the internet, allowing you to chat and play games with people from anywhere in the world. You don't need your friends to come over to your house and pass controllers around. Our games are more cinematic, and are like huge movies that we're seeing huge leaps in innovation because of the limits of technology and computational power are no longer inhibiting the developers' imaginations. There's a YouTuber called Boogie2988. When he does his videos as himself, and not as his character Francis, he brings all these points up and says that in the time we're in now, gaming is a miracle, and probably the best time to be a gamer. And I agree with him. There's also more quality control and finding reviews on games is easier now than ever, as you can get so many different opinions from many different people. You're able to avoid games like Big Rigs or Ride to Hell Retribution. You no longer have to take the gamble we had to take back in the cartridge days. But there will be people out there who say that most games that come out nowadays are just copy and paste of their predecessors and that the gaming industry has gotten lazy. I've said and had people agree with me that every new game in the Call of Duty franchise has just been a copy and paste of their predecessor. And you're welcome to disagree, but I want you to think about something. 
When Call of Duty Ghosts was announced, what was the one thing the internet pooped their pampers over? It was the dog. That dog got more attention than anything else about the game. They didn't care about anything else because they shrugged their shoulders and said it was just Call of Duty. No one cared until they saw that dog in the game. If the biggest thing that was received was the dog, then you know that a game series has grown stale because they've just been copying and pasting it. I'm not saying that the Call of Duty games are bad. I am not saying that. But come on Activision, give us more for our dollar. And to level the playing field, I've had people tell me the same things about Assassin's Creed and I could understand where they're coming from as I couldn't tell any of the games that focus on Ezio apart. And I'll be honest with you, I never thought that Assassin's Creed was going to expand as far as it did. I thought it was going to be three games and done. But again, no one is saying that these games are bad. They just want more for their dollar because they feel they didn't get their money's worth. Something I can empathize with as I've bought games that were good but felt like I didn't get my full dollar's value. Another thing people bring up is online multiplayer and how kids, and I mean young kids, get into games that are outside their age bracket, which I see nothing wrong with as long as they're taught the difference between reality and fantasy, so they don't go and do something stupid like sneak onto a plane and fly to Las Vegas imitating a Grand Theft Auto mission. And yes, that actually happened. But anyway, older gamers don't like this because these kids will shout at the top of their lungs and use profanity. And some people say that this is one of the biggest cons of online multiplayer now. And I would say that if you were annoyed by it, just leave the game and go to another server. But the chances are pretty high that there's another kid that's just as or more annoying will be there. And that's more of a parental issue. It's funny that the kids will be screaming and swearing and no parents will show up to tell their kid to knock it off. So what conclusion can you draw from all this? Well, modern and retro games both have their positives and their negatives, but it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. So the real answer to modern gaming versus retro gaming is that all modern games will eventually become retro games. It's really that simple. You can't say one is better than the other because as we grow older, our tastes and things change. If you're a kid right now, if there's a game you love right now, I can guarantee you that in 10 or more years, you're going to pop that game in and question why you liked it so much when the game isn't as good as you remember it or it's just plain terrible. Games don't actually age. The data on those discs and cartridges doesn't actually degrade, even though the physical media it's being held on can. It's our perception that changes as we age. It could also be a psychological issue. Maybe those that say retro games are better are unhappy with their adult lives and playing older games brings them back to days where they were a kid and had no responsibilities like needing a job or paying bills. And for those that say that modern is better, maybe they're just spoiled by all the technology we have right now. For example, I have a friend who said that the original Star Wars trilogy sucked because of the special effects and said that the newer trilogy is better because the special effects are all CGI. To me, one is not better than the other. They both have their pros and their cons. And while the cartridge days are infamous for having some bad games, trust me, some years down the road, a treasure chest, so to speak, of bad games from the 7th and 8th generation will be unearthed. So in conclusion, we can't say which is better as retro games were once modern games, and modern games will become retro games eventually. And as we grow older, we'll like different things and we'll see some games we loved for the piles of trash they really were, which will make us appreciate the really good ones even more. I haven't decided what topic I'll talk about next, so comment below and I'll choose the best one. Just keep in mind, these videos are when I can get around to them as my reviews are my first priority.